In the village of Kilshannig, two miles northeast of Castle Gregory, there once lived a young man named Tom Moore, a fine dancer and no poor singer either. The people of the area often heard him singing among the cliffs and in the fields at night. Tom's father and mother died, and he was alone in the house and began to think of finding a wife when early one morning he saw the finest woman ever seen in that part of Ireland. She was sitting atop a rock, fast asleep. The tide was out, and Tom was curious to know who she was, so he approached. Wake up! If the tide comes on, you'll drown. She looked up, but just laughed. Tom shrugged and left her there, but as he walked home, he couldn't stop thinking of her and her unearthly beauty, and he constantly looked back. He tried to work in the fields, but as the tide began to come in, he threw down his spade and ran for the place he'd left her. But as he ran to the strand, she slipped into the sea, and he saw no more of her. He cursed himself for not taking the woman from the rock, thinking that God had sent her to him. He couldn't work the rest of the day for thinking of her. He didn't sleep that night either. The next morning he was up at dawn to see if she'd return, and she was there. He called out to her again. She didn't answer, so he climbed up the rock. You may as well come home with me now, Tom Moore said. The woman didn't say a word. He snatched the hood from her head and said, I'll take that. At that moment she cried out, Give me back my hood, Tom Moore. Indeed I won't, he said, for it was God sent you to me. And now that you have speech, I am well satisfied. And taking her by the arm, he led her to the house. The woman cooked breakfast, and they sat down together to eat. Now, in the name of God, you and I'll go to the priest and get married, for the neighbors around here are nosy, and they'd be talking up a storm if we didn't. So after breakfast, they went to the priest, and Tom asked him to marry them. She was a good wife, and she lived with Tom for seven years, giving him three sons and two daughters. One day, Tom was plowing, and the plow's rigging broke. He went to the house and started rummaging through the loft, thinking there were bolts up there he could use to fix it. He threw down bags and ropes, looking for the bolts. And what else should he throw down but the very hood which he'd taken from his wife seven years before? She saw it the instant it fell, grabbed it up, and hid it. And at that time, people heard a great seal roaring out at sea. Ah, she said, that's my brother looking for me. The next day, when Tom was at work, his wife swept the house, put everything in order, washed the children, and combed their hair. Taking them one by one, she kissed them, then she went to her rock, put on her hood, and disappeared into the sea. At that moment, a big seal rose and roared so that people ten miles away could hear him, and Tom's wife swam away with the seal. All five children she left had webs between their fingers and toes, halfway to the tips. The descendants of Tom Moore and the seal woman are living near Castle Gregory to this day, and the webs are not yet gone from between their fingers and toes, though they are decreasing with each generation. Men from Papa Stour, one of the Shetland Islands, frequently hunted seals on the V Scaries. Once a seal hunter named Herman Perk was on the rocks there when an unexpected storm swept him into the Atlantic. His companions who were in the boat had all they could do to save their own lives, and it looked like Herman was doomed. But when the men landed at last on their island, they were amazed to find him seated at the fireside. He had been carried to Papa Stour on the back of a great seal, who had made him a bargain as the cold waves crept up to him on the scary. A little while before, the seal man's wife had been caught on Papa. Her skin was even then hanging in a fisherman's hut. If you promise to get that skin and give it to me, said the seal, I will carry you safely home. As soon as Herman reached Papa, he searched for the skin and took it to the beach. There, beside the seal who had saved him, was a beautiful nude woman. She hurriedly enveloped herself in the skin, then plunged joyously into the sea with her companion. In olden times, perhaps 200 years ago, there was one family of Keneleys living in Erismore, very close to the sea. They had one son, a fine young man. 
On May Day each year, three seals used to come offshore on a very big flat rock that was high above the tide. There was a cave five or six yards deep at the back of the rock under a cliff. When the seals came up on the rock, each of them took off the hood that was tied about its neck and threw it into the cave behind them. And as soon as they took off the hoods, they became the three finest women that the sun ever shone upon, and they would go out swimming. When they grew tired after swimming, they would come back onto the rock again. They would put on their hoods and immediately transform back into seals, return to the sea and disappear. Keneally used to watch them every May Day when they came. He liked the youngest woman best of the three and wondered if he could ever get her. He was working in the field one day at the end of spring when he saw coming towards him a fairly old man whom he had never seen before. He spoke to the man and they sat down to chat, each of them telling his own story. Keneally told about the three seals that used to come to the rock every May Day and he pointed it out. He told everything about what they used to do, when they came, until they dove into the sea again. There's one of them a lot nicer and more beautiful than the other two, he said. Sounds like you like her, said the old man. Indeed, said Keneally. I'm in love with her, but I have no chance of ever getting her. I have an idea of who they are, said the man. I've heard talk about them. What would you give to a person who could tell you the way to get what you want? I'm just a poor man, said Keneally. All I could give you is my 7,000 blessings. That's a good reward, said the man. Here's what you must do. Next May Day, hide in the cave that morning, and when they come to throw their hoods into it, put the youngest seal's hood inside your shirt. Keep the other two in your hands. The three women will be screaming and wailing, asking for their hoods and saying their father will kill them if they aren't home by a certain hour in the evening. They're the daughters of the king of the sea. You mustn't give the youngest woman her hood, no matter how much screaming and complaining she does. Give the hoods to the other two. Then walk towards your house, and the youngest will follow you. You must hide the hood in a place you'll never see it. If she does, she'll be gone before you know it. You may be sure I'll never let her find it, said Keneally. I love her too much for that. The old man then stood up and left him, and Keneally never laid eyes on him again until the day he died. Eventually, May Day came and events transpired exactly as the man had said. The seals came up, threw their heads in the cave. Keneally hid the youngest one's hood in his shirt, trapping her, and no matter how she pleaded, he would not give it back. He just led her back to the house. She spent the night there, and they got married the next day. He hid the hood in the roof of the house, between the thatch and the sods, and they lived happily together and had five sons. But each day when he was out at sea fishing, she would weep. One day, while he was out fishing, and she was working in the fields, she looked up and saw that the house was on fire. She ran back and called for help from the neighbors. The young men from the neighboring house got up on the roof and began throwing the burning thatch off the house. Of course, amongst the thatch, she saw her hood in the middle of it and snatched it up, and immediately ran for the sea, changing to a seal and diving into the salty waves. Her sons tried to follow her, but could not find her. Keneally came home that evening to find a half-burned house and five hungry children weeping for their mother. An earthly nurse sits and sings, and I, she sings a lily ween. And little can I, my baron's father, far less the land where he dwells in. For he come one night to her bed feet, and a grumbly guest, I'm sure was he, saying, Here am I, thy baron's father, although I be not comely. I am a man upon the land, I am a silky on the sea, and when I'm far and far frae land, my home is in Sul Skerry. And he has ta'en a purse of gold, and he had placed it upon her knee, saying, Give to me, my little young son, and take thee up thy nurse's fee. And it shall come to pass on a summer's day 
when the sun shines bright on every stain. I'll come and fetch my little young son and teach him how to swim the fame. And ye shall marry a gunner good, and a right fine gunner I'm sure he'll be. And the very first shot that e'er he shoots will kill both my young son and me. From an old Shetland ballad. Thank you.